Hi, welcome to my channel and today I'm going to be doing the redemption book tag. I will link the original below just in case you want to have a go because I'm not going to be tagging anyone in this. So let's just get straight on into it. Number one is a book or series you thought you would never read but when you did read it you loved it. For this I'm going to go with the A Song of Ice and Fire series or Game of Thrones by George R. R. Martin. I watched the first series of the TV show and then I started reading the books. At first I didn't think I'd read them because it was my first time reading adult fantasy so I thought it might be a bit complicated, a bit boring. But reading Game of Thrones, it was really good. Game of Thrones is my favourite book out of the whole series. It sets it up, it's straight in there. And even though it does get a bit complicated by the end, Dance with Dragons, so you don't know who's on whose side or whatever, it is still a good book and I think it is worthwhile reading it. I love how it's all um, different points of view so you get to see different points of views but you do end up finding out you have your favourite characters so sometimes you do kind of just gloss over the characters that you're not that interested in. I am really happy that I read them but I think when the next book comes out, I mean if it comes out, I don't think I'll be reading it because it just got too complicated. Next is a book or series you thought you would love but when you read it, it turns out you didn't like it as much as you thought. This I'm going to go with the Throne of Glass series by Sarah J Maas. So I thought I would love this for two reasons. I read A Court of Thorns and Roses and loved it and also it's about assassins. Then I read Nevernight by J Kristoff and I loved that as well. So I thought put them both together and this is my perfect book. Unfortunately, Throne of Glass, I found it very boring and I don't get on with most of the characters. Reading the series, some books are a lot better. Like I know Crown of Midnight was amazing and I listened to the Empire of Storms audiobook which made reading it so much better. So I am going to carry on with the series. I think the final book comes out this September. I will listen to the audiobook and I will get the book and I can't wait to see how it finishes because Empire of Storms handed on quite the cliffhanger. Number three is a book that you prejudged before reading it, but when you read it, you found it to be completely different. This I'm going to go with The Martian by Andy Ware. So I was a bit nervous about reading this because I thought it would all be science and maths, and I am really not into science and maths. It's just my worst subject ever. But then reading this, it's a lot more than that. Um, the main character is so funny. There's lots of sarcasm. Not something you would expect for a guy who's stuck on Mars by himself. And I just really liked it. I liked seeing the relationship between the astronauts, the kind of friendship they had, the fact that they went to save them even though they'd be out in space longer. I just really really liked it and I think this is a must read for everyone. Next is a character whose actions cannot be redeemed so if you've seen my Cruel Prince review you will know that I will probably be mentioning Prince Carden from The Cruel Prince by Holly Black just because the bullying he did it cannot be redeemed. He did such awful things to Jude and her twin sister that I just don't know why she's given him a second chance, why she's brought him into his plans, why on earth Jude crowned him prince just so that she could save her, her stepbrother. Yeah, he cannot be redeemed. I hate him and yeah. Number five is the character who redeems themselves in the end. So for this I'm going to go with Reese from the Accord Thorns and Roses series by Sarah J Maas. Just because when you do see him in this book he is a bit of a dickhead. I have to say that he's all over himself, he thinks he's amazing, he uses his power to get what he wants and you think he's a right you know, he's on the bad side completely. Then in the Court of Mist and Fury, you do get to see why he's doing that. You find out it's all an act just to protect his people, that he's gone through terrible things himself. And he really regretted doing all the stuff he had to do to just stay on the bad person's side. I think it's Aramantha. But yeah, I think he really redeemed himself. And some people do think he's a bit too perfect, but you know, you sometimes need that character that's a bit perfect. He does have his downsides, but he definitely redeems himself from what he does in this book. Number six is a book or series that you try to get through multiple times. I don't really do this kind of thing, so for me I have to say there isn't one. Because normally if I don't like a book, I will either just stop reading the series or I will just, just stop reading the book altogether and do an effort. So yeah, this is one that I cannot answer unfortunately. Number seven is a book that has problematic elements but it's close to your heart so it's forgiven. So for this I have to go with Harry Potter the series by J.K. Rowling 
just because as a kid I did love it and I still do love it rereading it but there are a few problematic elements like the lack of diversity you know I know JK Rowling saying there was at least one Jewish person there there was at least one gay person there Dumbledore's gay but it's not really mentioned in the book as much I think if that a bit more diversity actually mentioned in the book it would have been great for especially the younger generation or us people being younger to see like a gay person a Jewish person maybe more coloured people in the book because it is mostly white people apart from the odd coloured person and you don't really see many you know like gay people LGBT you don't see many of that which I know J.K. Rowling in her head is probably thinking this is just a children's book but it's become so much more than that looking back on it it probably would have been better if it did have a bit more diversity in it number eight is a character you love that you wish people loved as much as you did so for this I'm going to go with Common Strike from the Common Strike series by Robert Gilbreth aka J.K. Rowling just because I love him so much he's such a good character he's a private detective he's ex-army his leg was destroyed so he's an amputee and I just love him, he's the kind of person that if you're a victim he will protect you to his life. Robin, who's his secretary, he protects her. He doesn't really agree with her marrying her fiancé but he doesn't really say it because he doesn't want to make her unhappy. I just think he's so good and he's so brainy, he seems like a great person that I would love to meet and I just wish more people would mention this. I know we haven't had a book for a while, I think a new one is coming out soon. I think is it The Lethal White? I'm not sure when it's coming out, I hope it's soon because I do want more of this. And also there's now the TV show that has the two books. So The Cookies Calling and The Silkworm and I believe A Career of Evil might be coming out next year as a TV show. But he's such an amazing character and I hope more people start mentioning this soon. Number nine is a movie adaptation you think was better than the book. So for this I'm going to go with Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. Adaptation that I'm comparing it with is the one with Keira Knightley because that's the one that I kind of grew up on. I read this book, I've read it all through my childhood really at school but I've found out that like, rereading stuff from schools you kind of find it a bit better just because you're not being forced to read it and you are a lot older so you understand it a lot more. But with this I just could not get into Jane Austen's writing style so that's what kind of made it a bit boring, it took me a while to read and I just didn't get much of the wit and humour that you kind of see in the movie. So I do have more Austen to read but it's kind of put me off, it might have to be an audio route for now um, just because it might be better with the language barrier I've got. And number 10 is suggest a book that you think everybody should read that goes unnoticed. So for me, I'm going to go with The Muse by Jessie Burton, which I have been mentioning for quite a while. I think this month especially, I've mentioned The Muse quite a bit. But if you're into your historic fiction, and if you're like a bit of um, mystery as well, this is for you. Basically, this is set in 1960s London, where a painting is found. And the people at the museum are trying to work out where this has come from, you know, who painted it, what this painting means, because it's quite a weird painting. But then you go back to the 1930s in Spain and you get to see the origins of this painting and you kind of realise that it's not what it seems. And there's some twists and turns that I did not expect, so if you like that kind of thing, you need to pick this up. And whenever I mention this book, I also have to mention the cover, because it's the most beautiful cover I have ever seen. I love this so much and Jessie Burton is amazing. I think her next book will be a kids book, feminist dark kids book, so I can't wait to give that a go because that's going to be amazing. Yeah, that's it for the redemption book tag. I hope you enjoyed it. Like I said before, the original is linked below and if you want to have a go, feel free to. And as usual, you can like this video, subscribe to my channel and all my social media links are below. So I will see you later with a new video. Bye!